Good evening. I will call the meeting to order at this time. <clears throat> if you will please rise for the invocation <clears throat> and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, we, do, uh, we do have uh, Boy Scout Troop 124, is that correct, with us this evening? And um, I'm going to put one of you on the spot. I'd like to see if uh, somebody would like to come to the front and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Can I get a volunteer? Yeah, All right, come, come forward, sir. All right, you can stand right there. First, we're going to pray, and then after the prayer, I'll call upon you to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, and thank you, sir. Councilman Scott? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you bless us with, Lord, this time to come together to do business on behalf of our community. We pray, Lord, that you a special blessing over all the families and all those that's gone before us that served our country as we celebrate this Memorial Day a week, week in, week, Father. We ask, Lord, that you give us the strength and the knowledge to make the best decision on behalf of our community. Be with those that are sick, ill, or injured, unable to be here tonight. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Okay, gentlemen, um, have the agenda in front of you. I not aware of any known changes. Um, Mayor, I have one change I'd like to ask. Um, could we please move business item number one to consent agenda item number nine? Okay. Any any other changes? Okay. Not seeing any, do I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? I make a motion to approve as amended. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, our first presentation this evening is recognition of Boy Scout Troop 124 for their assistance during the recent shred event. So I'll ask you gentlemen to, to please come to the front. And where are you guys from? I know you're from Troop 124. Where are you based out of? Clayton. Clayton. All right. Well, welcome. Welcome this evening. And um, in the years past, uh, the local government, Federal Credit Union, has sponsored um, shred events throughout uh, Johnston County and here in Smithfield. Um, this year on May the 1st, the town of Smithfield partnered with Johnston County Register of Deeds, Craig Olive, um, and held the event... Uh, for both paper and electronic documents. Uh, the event was held at Triple S and had radio coverage from WKJO 102.3 FM. And uh, the, the event was a tremendous success. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, Craig, who's been doing this for many years, uh, stated that this was one of the, the largest shred events that he had participated in. Um, we could not have done that without the participation of you gentlemen, uh, of your entire troop, and we want to publicly thank you for, for your efforts. Um, and uh, again, thank you for doing service to your community. Uh, I, my oldest son, who is now a junior at University of North Carolina, is a Eagle Scout, as well as my middle son, who just graduated from Smithfield Selma High School, has also just received his Eagle Scout as well. So I encourage you all <clears throat> uh, to remain in scouting and uh, to achieve that, that highest rank if you're, if you're not already. Um, it, the organization, uh, I, I see Gary Johnson, our public works, uh, I mean, excuse me, our, our public, our parks and recreation director, excuse me, I'll get out in a second, out, sitting out there. We do a lot of projects throughout the community with scouting 
And again, um, it, is, it is because of your efforts that we are able to make improvements to our community, not only to, to the community itself, but it also helps our citizens as a whole. So again, I want to say thank you. Um, I do have a, a little pen to give you. Um, I'll, if I call your name, if you'll please just come forward. Um, Will Johnston. Thank you, sir. Adam Johnson. Thank you, sir. JT Taylor. Thank you. Will Anderson. Is Will here? Okay. Will when we'll bring him. Uh, PJ Papano, is that right? Thank you, sir. Andrew Quaid. Andrew Biller. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Noah Snyder. Thank you, sir. And then uh, leaders couldn't do it without without you. So uh, I, I uh, know how much my next door neighbor is our uh, Dr. Swartz is our one of our scout leaders at uh, Troop 77, and I know how much work and dedication that goes into this. And I want to publicly thank you gentlemen and all the leaders of the troop um, for, for what you do and the time that you put in to, to help mentor these young men. Uh, Cameron Taylor. Thank you, sir. Johnny Johnson. Mm -hmm. Paul Papineau. Thank you, sir. And I'm sorry. Chris Billiard. All right. There you go, Chris. All right. If you will, please join me in a round of appreciation. <laughs> thank you, gentlemen, and uh, thank you for helping le lead in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, <laughs> but you did a great job. Okay, our next presentation this evening is um, the Utility Customer Smart Portal. Ted? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Gentlemen, good evening. Tonight, the Public Utilities Department is excited to announce the launch of customer use smart portals beginning July 6, 2021. All utility customers will be able to log on into their account online and track their own electric and water usage. As you know, one feature of the installed AMI system is the ability to get current and accurate data to assist with the billing process. This data can also be shared with each customer, and that is what we are trying to do, to empower each customer so they can see how their monthly utility bill is affected by their usage. The customer need only to log into their own account at the same web page where they may pay their bill online, and their account information will be, will be available for them to see. The service is free to the customer. No customer will pay any extra for this service. So let me show you a few of the highlights. Every customer can go to the website for online bill pay. Then each customer may create an account or simply sign in if the account has already been created. Once registered, or, or, or registered rather, the site looks pretty familiar. From here, click the available services link. This screen will list all the accounts in the customer's name. This customer, particular customer, has many accounts. To get a look at your individual account usage, click on the consumption link pertaining to that account. The customer is presented a graph showing monthly water usage. Although water is the default view, it is not yet active for live data. Customers can see their monthly usage and bill, but that's about as far as we've gotten with water. If the customer clicks the other part of the tab, marked electric, the customer will then be shown the graph of daily usage. The 
customer may choose to look at hourly usage as well. Here, if you hover over one of those vertical bars, you'll get an accounting of exact usage as reported by the meter. We also have a feature that if the customer would like to download their usage data, they have the ability, or the ability to do that is provided. So the usage data may be exported into an Excel spreadsheet for them to use whatever fashion they may need. This may not seem like a great advantage to a lot of residential users, but commercial users may find it extremely helpful uh, when they're looking to see when their usage is greatest and when they may have greatest demand. Also on the electric page, customers may be able to see an estimate of where their invoice stands at that exact moment and what the estimated bill would look like by the end of the billing period. For customers and accounts that have a demand charge, this feature is also available. Customers have the ability to look at their demand usage to assist in tracking their demand. But maybe the most useful feature for our customers, from the customer's point of view, is the ability for the customer to set alerts by clicking the alert tab, which is circled. The customer will be presented with a screen where they can then have the system provide various alerts to their email, phone, text, or any combination of those three. These alerts invoice self-set thresholds set by the customer on usage limits, billing limits, consumption limits, Again, we are trying to put the power in the hands of the customer. Both June billing cycles will include stuffers that announce the launch. During June, we will announce this launch on the town website and on all social media platforms. Now, I know I've thrown a lot of information out there, and it's maybe even a bit confusing. And I will expect there will be a learning curve for every customer. But the website is pretty straightforward. So I hope everyone finds it helpful. Will we have questions? Sure. At the customer's request, customer service will be able to log into the website and see the same screen the customer sees, so they can follow along as questions can be uh, answered and assistance can be given. Again, we will launch this service on July the 6th. Remember for now, it is just electric. We will be adding water in the future. The goal here is to use the new system to empower the customer so they can make clear decisions about their utility usage. I thank you all for your time and look forward to July 6th. Any questions? No, I just have a statement, <coughs> Mayor, I'd like to make. I'd like to thank Mr. Creta for bringing this uh, to the table finally. Um, I would think that your presentation uh, is very straightforward, but would it be possible we could put together some type of video to put on a walkthrough video for our customers online with different cases? For example, if they or only a water customer or electric and water customer and stuff. Perhaps that would be helpful to them. And also our website. They can log in. I will certainly look into it. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. And, and I had a question. My question is, I realize that it, it is at no additional, no such thing as free anyway. So the question is, it's that no additional cost to the customer, but what did it cost to do this system? So obviously there's a cost involved. It's not, there's no such thing as free. Somebody paid for it. So <laughs> question is, what was the cost to the customer? I mean, what's the cost, what was the cost for it? Yeah, the, the initial setup, uh, the background data, et cetera, was, I don't know the exact total, but I can get that for you, but I'm, I seem to recall it was in the 5,000 range. Okay. So there's very little cost involved in the... Correct. But no, that that was not passed on to the customer directly. No. Nope. Unless the bill, unless we do then have to bump up time. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, guys. Okay, now we'll move on to our public hearings. The first public hearing is a quasi-judicial hearing, so if there's anyone wishing to speak for or against this matter, please stand now and be sworn in by the clerk. Is the applicant here? If you will, please stand and also be sworn.
Thank you. Our first public hearing is SUP-21-04 St. Ann Catholic Church. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved, Mayor. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Stephen, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. So this is Special Use Permit 2104. Uh, Chair Eden is the... Uh, Applicant requesting on behalf of CNN's church a special use permit to construct a 4,000 niche columbarium on the church property located at 4057 US 70 US Highway 70 business. Columbariums in the B3 require a special use permit uh, with over 2,000 niches. 200, sorry, 200 niches. Um, thank you. This is the location of St. Anne's Church in the B3 district. Uh, the B3 district is shown in red. Um, the niche is only a small portion of the 15.29 acre uh, church campus. Um, the properties around it are vacant agricultural and rural residential located behind the church. So mostly B3 and R20A zoning. Um, phase one is going to be between the church and the parking lot. Phase two will be uh, between the church and the chapel addition. So the locations are shown on this overall site plan, if you can follow the arrows at this scale. Um, this is phase one. It's uh, arranged around a uh, columbarium shaped as a cross with columbarium surrounding um, that cross shape um, with kind of a plaza design with trees and benches. The second phase is kind of arranged with the columbarium, more of a one-sided columbarium. The columbarium serving as a barrier between uh, the highway and the plaza area. And again, trees benches and some uh, also two-sided columbaria in the center. This is an overview of phase one, giving you an idea of what it looks like and will look like. Um, just as a little history, the town adopted regulations for columbaria. Um, having been aware of St. Anne's planned columbaria project, after the adoption of the ordinance, um, their plans were finalized and they found a few conflicts. So they authored uh, an amendment to that ordinance and then a couple of those changes were advantageous to them and also some of clarifying and that was approved uh, thereafter. Again, two, two phases. Phase one is 1,460 niches. Um, the columbarium are identified as being five foot six inches tall on the plans. Uh, phase two is 2,540 niches. And again, five foot six inches tall on the plans, consistent with phase one. Um, there's adequate access for maintenance as required by the ordinance. Um, they will be creating a perpetual and maintenance fund in the amount of 15% of the sales price. The council should determine if this is an appropriate amount for the scope of this project. If you recall, that was one of the changes to the ordinance. Um, the church is clear title to the land. Um, the columbarium are shown as five foot, six inches tall, which is less than the maximum allowed. Um, the setbacks will be adhered to. The stone materials will complement the church property. Commemorative plaques will conform with the standards. There are over 200 niches, therefore approval of the special use permit will allow this greater number. I have identified the findings of fact in the staff report. I'm not gonna go through them unless requested. Um, staff or planning department, rec planning, um, planning board, sorry, planning department recommends approval of SUP 2104 based on the finding of fact for special use permits. Um, there are no additional conditions being requested. 
but I have the recommended motion here. Any questions? Any questions for, for planning director at this time? So when they came before us last time, can you just give me a summary of exactly what we did last time then? Um, I'm a little confused on the numbers. Yeah, if I recall, 15%, that 15% was a change. Yeah, I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about the numbers of, of uh, niches. I believe 200 was the number that was originally allowed as the max. Right. And so anything beyond that would, would, could be approved with a special use permit. That's how the ordinance was changed. To make sure that the greater number didn't become you know, a burden on adjacent properties and that the site can accommodate it. And um, I would say this is a, a good site for a larger columbarium given the, the size and scope of the campus. So, so the UDO was changed to allow unlimited number. Not mm -hmm. unlimited, it's limited by the special use permit, which the council then. So it's, right. up, it's up to 200, yeah. right? right? And then above 200, a special yeah. use would be required. So right. that, that's what they're back here tonight for, is for the special use. And I think where there may be some confusion, if, that, I, if, that I, if I may, is I think there were some plans that were shown to us. Yeah, the plans right. really haven't changed, they've just been finalized. Right, but I don't think any of us knew uh, it, it included 4,000. No, that's true. Based off of the plans that were shown to us that night. That's right. I don't think uh, 204,000. That's a lot. Right? And I understand where the church is currently located, but also know that future development, that development in that area, including residential subdivisions, may occur in that area. Right? And I think that's. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, Dr. Barber, no. but I, I, I think you're maybe questioning the, the 4,000. Yeah, because I thought so I saw like a high number. I thought we saw some of the number. It was south of two thousand at the time. I think that's what we saw in the plans originally that was presented. But I thought that's what we had seen. So I just I was kind of surprised by the number. The number kind of was a larger number than a lot larger number than I thought what we had looked at. But yeah, I think uh, at that time we had shown you phase one, which is what fourteen sixty, I believe. Yeah, something. That, also, I was wondering. That's, that was some similar number what I yeah. saw. And then that's why I said I was taken aback by the 4,000. There's a big difference between 1,500 and 4,000. Yeah. I mean, the, the church, this is not a church that's, you know, tucked into a residential neighborhood. It's on a major highway. The location of it is between the parking lot and the church. It's not on the edges. It's, it's in a location that's only going to impact the church itself, in my belief. Today, right? Today, as the mayor just said, though, obviously we have a lot of people interested in development going that way. Future residential will be out beyond the periphery of the campus. So to me, this is an internal, the configuration and location of it is more internal to their site workings and it's well equipped with the parking and access that they have. If there were, what I saw is um, burdens being placed on adjacent properties, noise, you know, inadequate parking facilities, I think it would raise a flag for uh, the planning department. But I, mean, I think. If you're going to have a large columbarium, this is a good site for it. Now, if that's the correct number, I'll leave it up to you guys. But it is a, it is a large project, and I'll, the applicant is here to talk about it. And I guess I would direct your questions to him about the number and the planning for it. Okay. All right, before we do that, um, if you will, please state your name and address for the record. Yes, my name is Dean Penny. I live at 1013 Quail Trail in Clayton. And I'm a member of St. Anne Catholic Church and chair of the Finance Council and the Building Committee for St. Anne. Okay. Welcome, Mr. Penny. A um, couple questions, formality uh, questions I need to ask you. You, you heard of the test. This is a quasi-judicial quasi hearing, right? So you heard the testimony that was offered by our planning director. Do you agree with the testimony that yes, was supplied? Do you have anything that you would like to add? Uh, yes, I'd like to at least address some of the questions. Uh, what you saw at presented at the time the ordinance change was being discussed was, was phase one. Uh, we really didn't know at that time how much or how large the phase two might be, so we've had a chance to refine that. That's the difference between the 1,460 niches to the, to the full build out of 4,000. Uh, we are a parish that currently has over 7,000 members. Uh, the, the option for right now, we have no burial options. 
Uh, so we felt like the columbarium is actually the most feasible uh, and environmentally prudent burial option for us as a church. Uh, can you imagine how many acres it would take for us to do a, a, a cemetery? So uh, this columbarium has been planned as the planning director has stated internal to the campus. It does not, the only property boundary it borders is Highway 70. Uh, so nobody can build anywhere close to the columbarium that we're talking about. It is self-contained within our, within our properties. Uh, the other thing that, that by bringing a burial option on site, we think it will also have a positive impact for traffic during funerals because right now what happens is when funerals happen, then they have to go off site somewhere to be buried and we would be eliminating that extra set of traffic and shutting highway down and all that associated with uh, funeral processions. So, I'd be glad to answer any other questions you might have. Any questions, additional questions from the council? Uh, Mayor, can I ask Mr. Winston to put the plan back up there? It was the master plan from the <coughs> property. Mr. Penny, my question is, um, phase one is this large circle kind of in the middle there. And it appears according to this, phase two is the one by 70. This, this, this is phase one. Okay. And right now, this is our church. Our plan is to build a day chapel here. And the courtyard between the church and the day chapel would be where we would house the second phase of that project. So, would, is that to scale, to the best of your knowledge? Yes. The reason I ask the question is the first phase has 1,460, I think we were told. Mm -hmm. So that leaves 2,500 almost for the same square footage. Are, are they going to be any taller? Uh, no. We're planning them to be the same height. Um, what you're seeing here is in the room where Nancy buried where you're building the space we've got between the church and the parking lot. This Thank you. We'll build an obstacle and use it. Phase one is, is, is directly behind the church. But correct. Phase two will be facing 70. Is that correct? So you'll see it when you come by. Yeah. Phase one, you don't. Correct. Mr. Mayor, I also want to point out, just for clarification, that as part of the special use permit, you know, originally the ordinance said 50% of the price of a Columbarium needed to be put into a trust fund, and the ordinance now reads that uh, it can be reduced down to this 15%, which is what they're proposing. And the idea is that uh, you know economies of scale um, would make management of, of maintenance of the entire site much much more efficient. So, yes. Yeah, so um, at full build out, that would uh, be. We would have $2.4 million in that endowment fund for perpetual maintenance uh, with those 4,000 niches using a 15% of sale price. Uh, the 15% is consistent with what all the churches in the Catholic Diocese of Raleigh is using throughout Eastern North Carolina. Uh, that is the, uh, the standard that the bishop has put in place for all the churches within our diocese based on research that, that they had done uh, for other column bearers within the diocese and around the country. So speaking of the, the trust fund or the endowment, can you, Stephen, this is our first one, right? Can you kind of give us an idea? How, how does that work, right? I mean, at what point is the endowment, I mean, are you doing it based on the, every sale or at what point how, how do we know as a town that the assurance that the endowment day number one is in place and the amount of money that is in place? 
Um, again, my concern as, as mayor, 4,000, right? Certainly don't think the Catholic Church is going anywhere, right? But should the Catholic Church decide to move and so forth, and, and we as a town then are faced with having to keep these up, right? So can you just, maybe I, both I, of you, I, if you I, yeah, I, sure, I think absolutely. I address your sure. question, and then, um, so there is a foundation that's the foundation that supports the Catholic Diocese of Raleigh. And that foundation invests the endowment funds for the Catholic Diocese. I happen to sit on the board for that foundation. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we have the paperwork already drawn up, ready to be signed by me and our pastor for this endowment fund. Be glad to share with you that paperwork that, that outlines the, the rules and regulations of that endowment fund. Uh, we plan to fund that immediately with the few sales we have now. It, so it will probably be started with about $15,000 in there based on the number of sales we've got to date. Uh, we would then fund it as we sell niches. We would probably send checks either monthly or quarterly uh, as we sell niches um, to, to the foundation for investment in that fund. That fund is restricted to be used no more than 4% of the balance in any given year strictly for maintenance, upkeep, and perpetual care of the columbarium. Those funds cannot be used for anything else. So would it, would it be, be appropriate for us to, to ask for statements of the, of the endowment fund to, 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 to hold on? condition of approval. We can certainly do that. We get, we get, uh, and, I'll, and I'll let you guys work that out. Yeah, if, we, if we, get quarterly, that's a good idea. we get quarterly statements so we can provide them quarterly. I don't know if we want quarterly, or quarterly. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, because that's just more. I mean, I don't know, but yeah. I mean, is that something we would want to see? I mean, or no, I'm asking. I, I mean, you can have statements, but how often you want, them. right? I mean, yeah. and how much extra work you go over the next thing? Yeah. I would probably just maybe. Like, a, like an year, 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 yearly report page, or something, yeah, maybe? The statement is a one-page document, okay. and it can be sent in a PDF and email okay. to make it easy. So right. you just tell us how often you want it, right? and we'll be glad to provide it. Okay. I think that would be something advisable, just, just so that we know. Because um, you know, also, I'm, I'm sure we, well, we already have other requests for this in, in the future. Um, yep. I think there'd be an appropriate way to at least know what we're facing. So. Okay. If that's not a huge issue, maybe once a no. year or something, yeah. then I'll leave that up to that be planning sent, staff. You can just tell me what yeah. should be sent, but we can work that out. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Is that? Yeah. Mayor, I have another question. Sure. Mr. Penny, again, thank you for coming tonight. Um, obviously, I don't have any doubt that the Catholic Church is going to be there, and it's been there for a while. I know you all recently built, you know, well, it's not recent, but it's a fairly new campus. In your experience, in the event that you guys were to relocate, I know that's a very hypothetical situation. Is it common practice for them to move these facilities? I, I wouldn't say it's common practice because it's they've not moved every day, but can they move, be moved? Yes, absolutely. And uh, the way the columbariums work, and, and I've learned more about columbariums in the last year <laughs> than, than I've ever thought I would know, but uh, the, the frame and structure you know, is, is, is there to house the urns with the cremains, and so it would be, and we have to keep records of whose cremains are in which niche, and and so it would be just a, a bookkeeping exercise to keep track of whose cremains are who, and to pull them out and move them to a different location, and so it can be done. Okay. I think that's part of the concern, you know, hypothetically saying it's going to be moved. It was not going to be abandoned. Correct. Yeah. Right. Correct. Thank you. Any other questions for the council? Okay. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak for or against this matter? So please come forward at this time. Okay. I'm not seeing any. I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing at this time. So move, Mayor. Okay. Motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, gentlemen, we do have the findings of fact. We can go through each one of those, or um, we can uh, entertain a motion.
to approve them all. And uh, I'm assuming if we did want to add the condition of the statement that um, we could do that after the findings of fact. Is that correct? We just add that as part of the approval of the motion. Mayor, I make a motion we approve the request SUP 2104 based on the eight findings of fact. I have a motion to approve. A motion is second by Councilman Lee. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. And then we need a motion to uh, record a decision. And if you would like to add that condition of the yearly statement. Mayor, as part of the special use permit that we just approved, I'd ask that we, they provide an annual statement to the town. Okay. So that would be one of the conditions. Specifically for the column barrier. Yeah, right. Move to approve special use permit application SUP 21 okay. Have a motion to approve with that one added uh, condition. All in, uh, do I have a second? Second. Right. Motion has second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Penny. We appreciate it. Thank you, Stephen. Mr. Manager. Our next public hearing is not a quasi-judicial hearing, so uh, there's no need for anyone to be sworn in at this time. <clears throat> Our next public hearing is fiscal year 2021-2022 budget. Let's just give us a second if you guys don't mind. We felt sorry for our young men. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you certainly do not have to stay for this entire meeting, so please feel free to, to leave whenever uh, you, you feel fit. Right. So. Okay, all right. I, I, figured, I figured as much. <laughs> so we'll try to be out by 1130 then. <laughs> so, so which badge are you working on? Citizenship and... Okay. All right. Okay. Great. Mr. Mayor, do you, are you ready? Okay. All right. Uh, our next uh, public hearing is fiscal year 2021-22 budget in accordance with North Carolina General Statute 159-12B. Before adopting the budget ordinance, the town council shall hold a public hearing at which time any persons who wish to be heard on the budget may appear before the board. At this time, I will entertain a motion to open the public hearing. I move a motion will open the public hearing. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Mr. Manager, I turn it over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Got the wrong one there. And just... um, we come before you tonight, uh, council, uh, citizens. Um, talk about fiscal year 2021-2022 budget. Uh, this is a process that started uh, long ago in December. Uh, my staff has been working very hard putting together a budget document that would be balanced, um, meet goals of the council, uh, and continue moving our community forward as we experience new growth. Some highlights of the budget as they currently sit. Um, we are balanced in all three funds, that is the general fund, the electric fund, and the water and sewer fund. Uh, revenues and expenses total a little over $15 million in the general fund, a little over $16.5 million in the electric fund, and just over $9 million in the water and sewer fund. The budget maintains the property tax rate uh, as it currently is at 57 cents unchanged. 
There are some changes to our electric fees and charges adjusted to meet cost of service. What um, UFS, our, our company that advises us on our rate structure, found was that we have some rates that are a little too high and some rates that are a little too low, meaning that the higher rates are paying for the lower rates. So the intent is to even those out and make sure that the cost of service for each rate is paying for their fair share. In the end, it doesn't equal any type of an additional revenue source for the town. The revenue is status quo, but it raises some and lowers some. Our water fees remain unchanged. Our sewer fees remain unchanged. However, in front of the county board is a request to increase um, the sewer fees. So if that comes to fruition by July 1st, we will make a recommendation to the council to increase those fees is similar amount. Um, we are seeing some sanitation fee increases in this budget to also equal cost of service. Uh, the fees that we are currently collecting are not paying for the sanitation that we service that we are providing. Uh, anyone who has service in Smithfield knows that we operate a Cadillac service for our sanitation department. Pretty much if you put it out on the street, it's gone when the sanitation work is done. Um, we need some additional staff. We need another truck. Um, we are still not increasing this to the point where it's paying for itself, but it's a lot closer uh, to pay for itself. Uh, we also have necessary capital expenditures in the general fund of about $1.4 million, in the electric fund about $655,000, in the water sewer fund about $1.75 million. Uh, we maintained our employee benefits uh, as they currently sit um, without any significant changes. And we have also included a 2.5% salary increase for our employees. Some of the capital expenditures that you'll find in the budget are five police cars, uh, $181,000. A replacement in-car camera system for the police department. That's the squad video cameras that they have in each of their cars. Uh, at 189,000, additional new radar units for the additional new cars at a little over $11,000. And the, we have a building expansion that is underway and being paid out of the current budget um, through a loan. Uh, that building expansion should be completed in next fiscal year. So we'll start seeing debt service payments in this budget, but the uh, building itself won't be expanded and uh, completed until next fiscal year. For the fire department, we have a new SUV at about 45,000 and additional turnout gear. Uh, for public works, uh, we have our annual street resurfacing at about 234,000. Uh, those are funds that we receive from the state called Powell Bill. Uh, later on tonight, there'll be uh, our new public works director, Lawrence Davis, will come up and talk about the uh, resurfacing project that we're going to be doing out of this fiscal year. Uh, we do this every year. Um, for sanitation, I mentioned we have a replacement knuckle boom truck. Um, street department, we have to replace a tractor with a large side mower on it, the one that we have doesn't have a cab on it. It doesn't meet OSHA regulations or OSHA regulations anymore uh, due to that reason. And it is also extremely old and due for replacement. Our parts and rec, we have two replacement pickup trucks and also $74,000, which is going to help repair the amphitheater that is currently there, as well as uh, um, improve some of the drainage issues around, around that amphitheater. For the uh, Recreation Aquatic Center, we have some pool deck replacement, uh, drain replacement, about $14,000. If you've ever out there, there's a steel drain that runs all the way around the pool. Uh, that needs to be replaced for several reasons. It's going to be replaced with a substance other than steel, so it won't run. Um, and then the Sarah Yard Center, we have uh, uh, some work that's going to be done on the interior of that building, about $10,000. Some other major capital expenditures in the other funds 
in the water plant. Uh, we have East Smithfield water line improvements. We have a quarter million dollars dedicated to that. Um, the water plant expansion and improvements will be completed in fiscal year 2023. Again, like the police department, the monies for that are in the current budget, not in the new budget. Debt service for that the loan for the water plant expansion and improvements will not take place until the next fiscal year in 2023. So they're not part of this budget either. On the water sewer, we have I and I reduction, which is a normal thing we do. That's water seepage from rain and other manners in which water seeps into our sewer pipes and we work to replace those and repair those every year. Uh, Derwood Stevenson water line phase two, there's $200,000. That's a $1.6 million phase that we've been adding money to. Um, so that is coming to fruition as well. Uh, AMI next grid, we have $300,000 for water meters uh, and $100,000 for water line upgrades and Again, another $200,000 that we're putting into capital improvement account um, to work on a force main out on Highway 210. Our electric, our voltage conversion, which is ongoing and will be ongoing for many years, is $400,000. And we put $75,000 away last year for a bucket truck. This is the second year to put $75,000 in there. We will purchase it this year for a total cost of $150,000. Uh, AMI and load management for electric is $150, $150,000 um, placed in our uh, capital reserve fund, as well as a shelter enclosure for $30,000. We do have some personnel increases uh, this year. Uh, don't like to increase personnel when we don't have to because we're creating ongoing expenses. It's been many years since we've had a significant number of the new employee positions in the town, but, but due to growth um, that we're seeing, we're, we're having to move in that direction. So, uh, we have one new utility customer service specialist. It's be a person that sits here at the end of the hallway and assists everybody with getting their power hooked up, getting it disconnected, uh, answering any questions, helping them get their bills paid, uh, anything that they need to sign up for here in town. Uh, we have one new computer specialist or IT technician position that we are adding. Um, with all of the new computer systems that we have working in town, the new offices, the things that are going on, the new threats that we're seeing uh, to our security that you see around the country, um, we needed another person to help maintain that. We have two new sanitation equipment operators, and I mentioned those earlier. Um, that is part of that increase for sanitation. We'll pay, pay, for these, pay for these positions. One new water plant operator, one water sewer pump station mechanic. Or as we're growing and we're adding more subdivisions in, in town and annexing into town, we're adding more pump stations for sewer as well. We only have one pump station mechanic now. Uh, because of the addition of additional pump stations, we need to have another one. Two new electric linemen. We run our own electric utility here. Uh, we haven't increased our line positions in many years, over 10 years. Uh, and it's time to add those positions. Uh, and we added one half-time garage mechanic um, that works on all of our rolling stock, all of our vehicles here in town, as well as our lawnmowers, weed eaters, all of that type of equipment. Um, the council had a good discussion about should this be another full-time person or just a half-time person. We'd like to have a full-time person. Uh, the reality is the budget just doesn't entertain that at this time. So we're going to start out with an additional half-time person. We only have one full-time position now. And if that position fails or doesn't get us where we want to go, we'll come back mid-year and revisit that and look at a full-time position. We also have part-time firemen for EMS response. Um, while these are part-time firemen, um, the number is not important as much as the hours. So they'll work a, a total of 6,240 hours in a year. And their job is going to be to respond to medical emergencies. Right now we're using firemen 
to respond to those, driving a big fire truck, fire engine, everywhere they go. These two people, they'll be working 24 seven, five days a week, will respond in more of an SUV type vehicle. So we can save money and save wear and tear on our engine, our equipment, keep our firemen back so that they can respond to a fire if we have a fire call and EMS call at the same time. Again, some of the major issues that you'll find in this budget, no change in the property tax rate. There's a $2 residential increase in sanitation and yard waste. Now the county also is talking about increasing the tipping fees at the landfill. And if that comes to fruition, we may be forced to add another 46 cents a month to accommodate for that, that increase. Um, electric rate changes again, just for cost of service, not for increased revenue. Um, no water rate changes, um, no sewer rate changes. However, that's county dependent, meaning if the county changes that sewer rate for what they charge us, then again, we'll come back to council and ask that they review our rate structure and make sure we shouldn't also increase our rates proportionally. There's no capital asset transfer, meaning that all three of your funds, water, sewer, electric, and general fund are commingling dollars. So you're not paying more for electric so that money can go into the general fund and pay for police officers. They're all the same. Money stays where it's supposed to stay. Uh, future issues that we're going to be watching carefully is you know, we watched this COVID-19 go through for last year. Last fiscal year, we were very conservative in a lot of our revenue numbers and our expenditures. We put some things on hold because we just didn't know where things were going to go. Um, fortunate for Smithfield, things fared pretty well from a government standpoint. A lot of people are still hurting, though, out there uh, with jobs, uh, with their businesses. Um, so we're going to watch that and be very cognizant of that and try to influence that positively as much as we can and make sure that if the pandemic rises its head again that we're also prepared for that. Um, we're also seeing a lot of residential and economic growth. We're going to see quite a bit this year. Um, and I'm not, we, we have the new Amazon project that most everybody knows about, but besides that we're seeing a lot of annexation, um, uh, residential subdivisions coming into town and other businesses as well. So we want to watch how we're addressing those things as a city or a town government and maintain that town feel. As we grow, we don't want to change what Smithfield is. So we're going to be cognizant, making sure that our service level is, remains high and people don't just become a number. Uh, so that's very important to us, very important to the staff and the council. We've had those discussions to make sure that we stay what Smithfield is as well. Uh, property taxes, uh, you can see we have the uphill, uphill climb throughout the, the last uh, six years. Uh, that continues to go up. Um, that's mostly because property values are staying steady or actually increasing in property and value and more residential property and businesses coming into town. Um, these numbers don't reflect anything with uh, uh, Amazon. None of these numbers will because we won't see those numbers for quite some time until they're, they're built out and actually operating. Sales tax comparison was pleasantly surprising this year. We really thought going into COVID that our sales tax revenues would be considerably lower. As you can see, they're not. Um, the estimate for this fiscal year is still higher than last fiscal year. Uh, and that was very surprising, and it's good news for our, for our businesses in town that they are still operating and still conducting sales. Our fund balance comparisons, you have the uh, blue line there is our general fund, which houses all your police, fire, public works, parks and rec, administration, those type of things. Uh, all of our fund balances, our intent is to make sure that we are always over 25% of the expenses that we have allocated for the year. Um, we're over 80%, about 85% now. Uh, we anticipate that number staying pretty steady next year uh, or as we do our audit for this current year, which ends next month. Uh, 
your electric, uh, which is your red line, it also has a steady trend up. Uh, we anticipate that to be stay on that trend. Your water and sewer, which is your more orange color that is way up at the top, that is a little bit artificially high because that fun, some of that fund balance that's there is going to be transferred into paying for the water plant um, reconstruction and improvement project. So that number will come down next year, but it will stay above our 25% our um, minimum. General fund allocations. You can see here, this is kind of a, a busy chart, but it identifies all the departments that are in the general fund. And it talks about how um, each one of them uh, is allocated in the budget. So you see the police department is, is your highest cost of service uh, at 29% of the budget. Um, your parks and rec uh, comes out to about uh, about 15% overall between the Sarah Yard Center, the SHRAC, and Parks and Rec in general. Uh, your fire department's about 13%. Your uh, public works comes out to about not quite 20%. Everything else is small numbers. Planning's only 2%. Finance is about 2%. Same with uh, um, general government. Your debt service is about 6%, which is a good number, good, good uh, number to be at. That, that represents how much we're paying out of this budget on loans that the town has. And again, this is just the general fund, uh, the not water and sewer. We'll talk about those in just a second. Our water and sewer fund, you've got about 68% is the water and sewer distribution. So about 68% of that budget goes to moving water and moving sewer from point A to point B. So the toilets flush and things get done. And your faucets turn on when you turn on. Um, the water plant is about 23%. That's the blue triangle up there. Um, that's how much is it takes of the current budget. Uh, your debt service, again, is low at 7%. Um, and... Uh, your contingency, which is just money that is placed in the budget for unforeseen circumstances, is about 2%. Your electric fund is even more basic, since there's nothing else but electric. Um, providing that service, 96% of that budget goes to providing you that service. 2% uh, goes to contingency, and 2% uh, goes to debt service. So there's only one one loan out, and that's for the big substation um, on the east side, uh, Broadview Road. Talk about debt service or loan payments. This is all the current debt that's account that is in this budget. Again, there will be water plant debt next year, but that's not part of this budget. Uh, we uh, we did retire two different accounts this year. One of the, both in the general fund. One was uh, for, for vehicles, uh, rolling stock uh, loan that we had taken out. And the other one we paid off early, which was the EMS building across the street, uh, was at a high interest rate for a long number of years. Uh, we had fund balance money to be able to pay that off, so we paid it off and saved about $38,000 in interest in doing that. Um, Next year, you don't see a lot of this debt falling off. The big one that falls off is the Booker Dairy Road, Road loan, and it's not really Booker Dairy Road anymore. It's Derwood Stevenson Parkway, but it was called Booker Dairy when we took out the loan, so the names remained. Um, that is a large uh, debt service payment that we make um, through the water and sewer fund. That will be retired in this budget, so when the new debt comes on for the water plant uh, in, uh, refurbishment and, and uh, improvements, um, we'll have this revenue or this money also to help pay that debt. Mr. Mayor, that concludes the presentation that I have on the budget. 
Um, be glad to answer any questions, um, Council or anyone else. Thank you, Mike. Any questions for Mike at this time? I do have one question, Mayor. Um, it was related to the uh, SRAC repair, I think it was 13900 I know we have an agreement with the county, with the uh, school system. Are they contributing equally to the some type of project or to that project? They're paying for some of the other projects, Gary. They're doing that too, right? Yeah, so that's just our half. Okay, that's just want to clarify. Any other questions for town manager at this time? Anyone in the audience wishing to speak on this and have any questions or concerns? If you will, please state your name and address for the record. Emma Gimmel, I live at 207 Hancock Street, Smithville. Um, Mr. Scott, I feel like that maybe I might not have the right wording, but I think you'll get the idea. Um, I was concerned that is there any kind of rainy day fund? That was the word. I'm not sure what kind of thing in the budget you could do. But um, the example of the increasing sewer issues, is there any place that you could um, put monies aside for impact so that the town with the town users of the sewer will not be impacted as much if the county prices increased drastically. Is there any place? That was question number one. The second question is that I think I've spoken to you about the two Ms. parking lots. Ms. Gimler, if you don't mind, can we take one question oh, at a time? I was just going to sit down. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I, if you don't want a response right now, that, that's even better. Go right ahead. You may proceed, ma'am. Um, I've talked to uh, Mr. Scott about uh, the two parking lots. Um, the Simple Twist parking lot, besides Simple Twist, is a town parking lot, and the town hall is a parking lot that greatly needs improving, and I know that you can find monies for things when you need them, and I think that both are greatly needed, and the improvement would show for the town when people come into the building here at Town Hall and also to Simple Twist where there are a lot of um, meetings that people eat downtown and they park in those areas. So those are the two questions. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. Anyone else wishing to speak? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Lampy. I'm Pam Lampy at 415 North 2nd Street. I too have a couple of questions. Um, I would like to ask that the town and the council consider separating the water and sewer distribution expenses for better accountability. Water and sewer distribution costs are not separated and are lumped together. Um, also, we buy sewer directly from the county and it would be nice to know what that number is. This number is detailed in the budget, but it would be nice to have it noted on Mr. Scott's section two, where we start talking about um, how the budget is going to be spent. And if you go back to your chart, um, where it's got the 68%, um, I know a big number, part of that 68% is the sewer cost that we pay to the county. Is this the 68%? And lumped in that 68% is water and sewer distribution costs. So I would like to separate water from sewer distribution, if that's possible. And it's just a general ledger kind of thing, separating the two costs so that we can better account for those items. And I know in that 68%, probably, I don't know, but most of that has got to be the sewer expense to the county, what we pay the county which would be a nice number to know. So that's one question. The other question I had was um, about the $74,000 in repairs for the amphitheater. Um, I know we had talked about potentially um, expanding that and spending like $1.1 million. I didn't know the status of that. And specifically for the $74,000 was gonna be for, is it gonna be, I know you said something about drainage, but it's some for the flooring and it's some for the, the roof. Um, and that's it. Thank you, Ms. Lampy. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I will just address the, the uh, amphitheater. That's okay while, while you're here, and I'll just hit the highlights, right? So, so the, the monies that are budgeted this year are to just make necessary repairs um, and to improve the drainage there. Um, as far as the overall master plan for that area and the, the approximate million dollar price tag on that, that's something that we, we, we have asked us to bring back up and let, let's look at it as a council, but there has been no, no um, uh, movement on that at present, right? We don't, we don't have the, we, we discussed it in the budget session, so we haven't had any of those uh, additional discussions yet. Um, but um, I think there is some interest uh, from some of the council to bring those, dust those plans off and uh, working with the, the uh, uh, Johnston County Tourism Authority um, and, and speaking with them and, and, and just kind of bring that back up just to kind of look at it to see where we stand. But monies budgeted this year are strictly for the repairs that are necessary and for drainage improvements in that area for right. For right. Yes, it would. That's part of the repairs. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Not seeing anything, anyone? This time, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Mayor, before so, I have a couple other comments I'd sure. like to make. Sorry. Um, as we did talk in our budget session, um, uh, specifically about the electrical program, I just want to ask Mike and Ted to stay and update us on the meter reading process. Um, we're still spending a significant amount of money for meter readers, and I think we talked about getting some updates on that. To uh, conserve that and I appreciate Mr. Creator bringing the portal today that's a step in the right direction and the last comment I had mayor I know we've taken action before and I think it's only fair that we express this and it's not been mentioned but our power bill money in the past we use reserve funds to address street surfacing and I want the citizens to know that we have not overlooked that the town is I'm waiting for direction on some of the uh, other funds that we'll be receiving probably be making a bigger address on that this year so I mean I know it's very important our streets are have many needs and uh, we're very aware of those we want to make them better that's all I have mayor thank you Councilman Scott yes we we are awaiting funds from the American Recovery Act is that correct yes. this this month um, we're still I think we have guidance from the Treasury Department of how we can spend those I think they'll probably be <laughs> Um, some additional questions and so forth, but once we get those funds distributed, um, you know, we can start looking at ways that, that they can put good use of those funds. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am, first of all, uh, let me say, uh, I appreciate the comments that you ladies made. I think I made notes of them because I think there were some valid points that I want to make sure that we follow up on because I do think there are something that I, I didn't thought about, especially about the parking lots. I didn't know pay attention. Place of is something we need to look at. So I appreciate that. But also, as far as the, uh, the uh, I'm on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board or whatever it's called. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, we are in the process of putting together the uh, a new 10 year plan for Parks and Recreation. Is that right? The 10 year plan? Five year plan. And uh, we had a large discussion. Uh, uh, I mean, it took us probably 45 minutes to an hour talking about the. Um, uh, the amphitheater and things that we want to do. I think that, that a lot of us want to do something. I think this, what you're going to see that the budget approved upon, according to uh, uh, Gary, that the, the stage is going to be back where it should be. It'll be usable again. It'll be much, it won't be something to be ashamed of, but something we can use and have venues on. But we could not do that without fixing the drainage in the front because it just won't do it. So we had to include the drainage. The rest of the stuff, it's going to cost a lot more money to do the landscaping part that needs to be done, and we need a plan for that. And uh, we met with, uh, again, we met with the, uh, the travel people, the, the, the tourism people. They've got some money that they can help us with, but we don't always just blow money. We need to make sure we have a plan. So I just want y'all to be assured we know what you're saying. We hear all over town people saying, what's going to happen to the amphitheater? We need to get it fixed. I think you'll see that most of us are very much in favor of that. But we're being very cautious about how we do it and make sure we do it the right way. But we appreciate you bringing that up too, and uh, I think you'll you'll be pleased with that and when it gets done. So um, just want to make those comments. Thank y'all. Any other questions, comments for Mike or anyone else at this time on the budget? 
If not, uh, we'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, like so. Motion carries. Okay, at this time, I will entertain a motion to adopt the fiscal year 21 22 budget and fee schedule. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a recommendation. I'll make a motion that we approve the budget and the fee schedule. Have a second. Second to approve the budget and the fee schedule. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries, Madam Clerk. Mr. Manager, thank you very much for all of your hard work and to the department heads and all of the town staff. Thank you very much for all of your hard work and for the citizens and for the input that we receive from the citizens. Um, thank you very much. I think we have a good budget. Um, we have a balanced budget. I think it's... Um, it's a good use of taxpayers' money. Uh, we're making some, some much-needed improvements to some, some facilities and so forth. And uh, uh, I just want to say thank you to, to the manager, um, to the finance director, and again to all the department heads, and to you gentlemen sitting up here. Um, uh, a lot, if you don't know, um, I'm not exactly sure how many budget sessions we've had over the last two months. But a lot of long hours uh, have gone into this budget. Lots of late nights have gone into this budget. And again, I want to thank you, gentlemen, um, for all of your hard work, for your input, but most importantly, for what you do to look after the taxpayers' money and being good stewards of the taxpayers' money. Again, I think we have a fantastic budget. There's always room for improvement, and uh, we're open to, to listen to any of those. Um, thoughts or uh, uh, any, anything that anyone has that they would like to include. i um, not saying that we can obviously do it this year, but um, we'll certainly take it under consideration for next year's budget. So again, thank you very much to everyone who has uh, participated in this year's budget. So thank you, Mr. Manager. And this year, uh, at this time, we'll move on to citizens' comments. Anyone wishing to speak, please come forward at this time. Hello, sir. How are you? Good, Taylor, good. if you will, please Hello, state your name and address. Okay. I live on First Street in Smithfield. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate y'all for bringing Amazon. I really appreciate it. I know it's going to be a huge addition to this town. Y'all did a lot of hard work, and thank y'all for that. The reason I'm here um, is the trash pickup in the alleys. And, and I don't know what the true details are. It kind of found out just recently that y'all made a decision not to pick them up in our alleys. It affects, uh, I estimated, about 125 blocks in the town. Um, just a little bit of history about me. Um, you know, I grew up here in the county, in the t actually in the Smithfield. We moved to that house that I'm in now in 1980. I grew up there, moved away, came back, bought the house from the estate, um, and live there now. Um, just recently, um, I had a call that, you know, the alleys were in bad condition. We'd had a lot of rain. Um, I don't know why. I mean, I've been there forever. I've never seen the alleys in that kind of condition before, but they were extremely muddy. The town employees knocked on the doors and said they were going to shut them down temporarily and move the trash cans out to the street for a while. And I called, um, let me see, who did I call? Yeah, I called and left a message, and actually uh, it took a little bit of time, but Mr. Davis gave me a call back, and he assured me that it was a temporary situation and the pickup would be reinstated, but um, some other issues needed to be addressed first. Well, several weeks went by, and um, I had heard something from uh, um, one of the neighbors that they had heard that no longer was going to pick up the trash in the alleys. And, uh, I don't know when that happened. I reviewed the minutes of some of the board meetings. I haven't seen where it was discussed publicly. Maybe it was and I missed it. I don't follow it like I should. And there's not been a lot of time, um, honestly. But anyway, um, after hearing that, I called back and spoke with Mr. Davis again. And he informed me that, um, let's see, what was it? That the town council had approved it and there was, he was doing what he was told to do. Um, and referred me to talk to Mr. Scott, and he gave me a got my number, but I haven't heard back from Mr. Scott. But in all fairness, I mean, this was last week, week before, and we've had Labor Day weekend and all that, so I haven't heard back. So I don't have a lot of the details, but uh, I would like to request that the town consider reinstating that um, trash pickup in the alley. I brought a picture of my alley. There's absolutely no reason for 
not picking it up there as it has been done for decades. Um, ever since I've been there and way before, I did do a little search. I've spoken with some of the neighbors. They're not happy about the decision either. They want the trash picked up like it always has been. Um, for me personally, and for others too, but there's a significant difference between my rear yard and my front yard. And you know, not being aware that this might be a situation the way my privacy fence was built, it's, there's a small gate to bring the trash can through that I can't get the trash can through, and there's a large gate that was not meant to be opened weekly. It was meant occasionally when I need to get something to the backyard. And so it's, it's a big burden every week to bring that trash can forward. But more, we've got a lot of elderly and disabled people and it's a burden for them to do that. And, and I, I feel like at least it should have been addressed publicly and had the citizens had a chance to, to discuss it. And so that's why I'm here today. Um, the trash stands are unsightly, um, sitting on the street. Um, usually it's, for me, it's a Sunday and maybe Tuesday when it gets back. Um, just this past week, when we had the storm run through, um, the water was rushing maybe that wide through the gullies, washed my trash can down the street, dumped it over and all that. Um, it's just, I don't know, I was really surprised that nobody was informed and that I found out the way I did. I mean, I was told, you know, by the workers it was temporary, and then I was told by Mr. Davis it was temporary, and then only by finding out by a rumor from my neighbor was I told, you know, called back and was told then that it was now decided to be, you know, permanent. Um, I just feel like that all the people affected should be notified and have a given opportunity to speak about the matter. You know, I am concerned also, I uh, did a little bit of research, um, and I did find an old plat. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, the town was platted in 1950, and it's on plat book six, page three, two, oh, three, three, 103, that the uh, town, at that time, the town board of commissioners, they accepted the alleys and the street system in a meeting dated August the 2nd of 1956. And I've heard rumors from one of my neighbors down the street that the town actually gave away part of that alley and looking into it further, it does look like they did. Um, are y'all gonna start giving away streets later? I mean, that's very concerning to me. I mean, they, they, it's like you, the town wanted to give away their um, responsibility for maintaining that. And so I, I just think it should be heard by the, uh, you know, everybody should be notified and that be given the opportunity to respond to it. and. And I'd like to know more details about how it occurred without anybody's knowledge. You know, I have some pictures if you'd like to see them. So while those are going around, uh, Mike, do you want to? Yeah, if I could, address if I could address just a couple of the issues, I'm not going to be able to address it all right now. But, yeah. um, sir, I don't. In, in honest, I did want to give some time to talk to you about it, but I didn't know the meeting coming up so quickly. Maybe I should have hey. done this week. Yeah. This it's time. no problem. Um, but I, I was a little taken back because I don't have a message from you to call you, so that's why why you haven't heard from well, me. That, that, that explains why I didn't get called. Mr. Davis did tell me he took my number and told me that he was going to give it to you and have you call me. Oh, so Mr. Davis was going to give me the you didn't leave me a message or no, I didn't, no, oh I, okay he was okay you leave with you because he suggested I speak to you about it. Oh, okay, okay. That's that, you know, the first, at first I was told it would not be changed, and then by him, and then later I was told. It's been changed, and I wasn't even notified. And you know, yeah, I he understand. Was, he remembered the conversation, the original conversation, but he was said, it, you know, who's doing the instructing? Okay, well, I'm I'm just sitting. I no, 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 got no, my no. emails running through my head, got my phones no, running through no. my head. I don't recall anything, but so I'd be more than happy to talk to you about it. I, I, um, I, I will say that, that that you know the the town and and the staff are in the process of those notifications. We haven't, you know, this is a budget and it's a budget issue. Uh, our budget doesn't go into effect until the 1st July. So you're a little ahead of the game. You're, you got your ear to the ground. You hear, hear good stuff and, you know, you're, so you're ahead of some of it. But, okay. yeah, but, I um, right. So, so that's, that's why. But Mr. Davis did cite that it was a safety issue. And I really, I have a hard time agreeing with that. I can understand that being an issue if it was. 
because the guys are riding on the back of the truck in the ruts and they were falling off the back of the truck. But they're not riding on the back of the truck. They're walking from can to can, putting the trash in the back of the truck. Yeah, it's not so much the. Concern me a little bit. I'm like, well, they should be riding on the back of the truck at that point anyway. It's not so much on the back of the truck that the the concerns that have been brought up as much as a lot of the fencing and things are encroaching into the alley as well as trees and things. Mm -hmm. People don't want us to cut their trees out of the alley. That creates some issues. I I know, I know, but but people are sensitive. But I, I'd hey, love to have this conversation Mr. with you, Mr. Just Daly, for two if I can so. interject. So, so I did fail to mention that I do try to we try to keep these uh, citizens' comments to three minutes. Okay. So we have I have allowed this one to go on a, a little bit longer. But I want to ask the manager to address what he needs to, yeah. and then afterwards I'll ask him uh, the, to get with you personally. If you will, please leave your name and number with the clerk be um, before you before you leave. That way we make sure that we can get back in touch with you after the meeting. If you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if you could just give it to her at some point, or have, have you got? Yeah. So, in a nutshell, while we're doing that, is basically we're in the process of making those notifications of, of the of, of the permanent closure or permanent um, act of not picking up the trash in there. Well, yeah. No. No. I, I understand. I understand the request, but. Um, just want to let you know that that's that's where we stand, and then the manager can follow up with any additional questions that you have. So, thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, Anyone know. else wishing to speak? Yes, ma'am. Um, Emma Gimmel, two hundred seven Hancock. Um, I have a repeating issue that has not just been me repeated; it's been other people. I know that stormwater is an issue with the trash on the street, and when we have large rainstorms it is difficult the problem that most residents have when they don't put it in the street when they put it on the grass those scooper things take my grass I have replaced my grass three times in my yard my neighbor has had to replace their grass two times you do not pay for it we do and so it's either going to be on the street. I don't know how to tell the guy because the guys don't always, they aren't always the same because I've told them to be careful. I have a place now that I can do it. So it's not an issue with me, but I can tell you it's an issue with other people. Yep. And they, they just take the grass and, and they're, they're not even, it's like a ditch. Anyone else wishing to speak in, during citizens' comments? All right. All right. We'll move on now to the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as I think amended? A motion. We uh, approve the consent agenda as, as amended. Second. Motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then we'll move on to business items. Our first business item is, uh, let's see, uh, should be actually business item number two as far as your agenda goes. It's uh, annexation-12-01 for annexation request. Stephen, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Sure, thank you, Mayor. Um, this is the first step in the annexation process. This annexation request is coming from Samick Corporation. As you know, they purchased the large properties, um, part of which includes the uh, Amazon site. Um, they have requested annexation of the entire land that they have under their ownership. And uh, this first step is just uh, the clerk investigating the sufficiency of the petition. Go ahead. Okay. Any questions, comments for? Stephen at this time. Mayor, I'd like to know how that's going to impact our ETJ, what the plan is with that. Stephen, did you uh, hear the question, how it impacts the ETJ? The ETJ will not expand as a result of it. So um, that's kind of what I wanted to ask. Is that the question? Yeah, I want to. So, so follow up on that then. Uh, the, um, so the ETJ is permanent? Um, I 
believe it's permanent unless uh, the stent, uh, the legislature makes changes. So it's controlled by the legislator, North Carolina legislator determines our ETJ? I don't believe every time the town grows, it just can keep expanding out. I'm not an expert on the ETJ. Okay, because the question is, if, it, if, it, if the law says that the ETJ extends so many miles outside of the town limit, and the town limit exchange changes, then would that not kick in an ETJ expansion? I, I, I can't answer that fully. That would be perhaps a question our, that we would like perhaps to Perhaps our attorney on. could know that, but we, we annexed the, was it the Twin Creeks, which is on the very outer extent of our ETJ, and that did not trigger a new two-mile border beyond Twin Creeks. So um, I'm not entirely sure how that process works. But I know it. This will not trigger an expansion. Right. Again, I'm not an expert on it. I've I've got my views on it, but I'd want to clarify those. So let me put something together. I'll send it out to the council. Because we've also extended our boundary down the East River, right? Yeah, we annexed. I mean, that's well. I'm saying that's annexed too. So that would that extended that way too. I'm just saying our town continues to grow this way, and the ETJ is getting smaller now. <laughs> just saying, I think there's probably something involved in that. But it'd be nice to know. Thank you, sir. Mayor, just as a matter of order, so that we stay in order, um, doesn't really have an effect on this petition. So I'd ask that we talk about it. Not today. I think uh, manager will get back to it. I think he plans to get some research, answer some questions, and then maybe get back to us with, with that. Um, I'm sure there's there's several things that have to go on there, should that be the case, and that's working with the county and so forth. But you also have to understand that there are other communities that have ETJs that may have but our current ETJ, and we certainly can't go get in coach on theirs as well. So I'm sure there's, there's a lot involved in that, but uh, definitely a, a very good question um, as we grow. I think that's something that we all need to understand. So. Any other questions for Stephen on this on this matter this time? If not, I'll entertain a motion to um, approve or deny the annexation request. I'll make a motion to approve the annexation request. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the annexation request. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I, mean. I approve the resolution. Uh, do, can I just, just, yeah, for, yeah. just so officially, sorry, to approve resolution number uh, 680? I didn't see it on the picture. I'm trying to find it. I have a motion from Councilman Scott to approve re resolution, uh, annexation, annexation resolution number 680. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> just want to make sure we have that's that official uh, in the record. Okay. Um, now we'll move on to our next bi uh, business item, which is business item number three, a uh, bid award in the amount of um, $240,626.80 to Garris Grading and Paving for the 2021, excuse me, 2021 street surfacing project. Lawrence, turn it over to you, sir. Welcome. Streets. We have 14 streets on our list that uh, need to be improved. Um, we sent out uh, 14 bid packages out. Out of the 14, we got six um, that responded and also gave the bid. Um, Garrison, uh, Garris Grading Paving was the company that we sold with, uh, decided to go with and move with. And uh, with your approval, we'd like to go forward with that. Any questions on this matter? Just say something to get the one on both streets. No. Mayor, I do have a question, um, maybe for the manager, Mr. Davis. Um, when Mr. Branch was your predecessor, quality control is a big issue, making sure that we get adequate for what we're spending. Just want to make sure that we still have that in place to make sure that we're getting the quality product that we're paying for. For example, the thickness of the asphalt. Yeah, so I guess the 
question is, is with, I know Lenny, I don't know if there was a certification that went along with that or just uh, the knowledge, but we will still be, do, I don't know, Lawrence, if you have that, what's needed, or but we'll still be testing the, uh, the surface and so forth before we accept or, or make payment, is that correct? And yeah, we'll, we will be on top of that. I'll be on top of that. Um, we're making sure they do what they're supposed to do. Okay. Uh, Mr. Drexler helped us with that too, some is that right? That's correct. Um, somebody, was it you, Councilman Rabel, that asked about if this is the same company as last yes, year? Sir. It is not. It's not the same company. Yeah, the mm. totally, different, one? totally different company. Okay. And we, we have good references and so forth from, from this company that was, yes. Uh, okay. Well, for the last what, four or five years, I'm, I'm still kind of asking the same question, and I, I just want to kind of know how these streets have been picked. So I, I, I do I do know that I mean unless something has changed, we and Mayor, uh, Mr. Manager, I'll let you chime in, but we did do a study um, of the streets several years ago, and I thought it was updated yeah. recently, right? Um, uh, by an outside agency um, so, so that they could determine which uh, basically rank them and um, we're supposed to be working from that list as far as worst conditions uh, uh, streets that are in the worst conditions to, uh, down that list is that still the practice there may be some that are yeah. not you know it may be different and so forth but in general is that still the, the practice I'm assuming that is still the, that is still the practice I use the list that we have from last year, and we will go according to the list of these streets that need to be repaired. Gotcha. Well, we'll go ahead and let you know. I'm, I'm getting tired of all these outside studies, and I mean, we need to see the people who that are here every day and drive some of these streets. And I mean, here again, the, this has been the last five years. I mean, if people will get out and drive and see some of these streets, I mean, especially over in East Smithfield and the Pine Acres. Um, subdivision. I mean, some of these streets are just, it's terrible. So, I mean, all the outside, I mean, I, I want the people on the inside, I want staff to get out and kind of see what's going on because it's, it's the same story. And then we'll go over and patch it up. We get a good rain and it's, it's gone again. But I'm getting sick and tired of this road right here. Me personally. Any yeah, other? Questions, comments on this? I just had a question related to, uh, you know, it seems like when we have a, a lot of the damage, I mean, a lot of the bad spots that I see on the roads that we have in our district is where somebody else has done some work on the road. You know what I'm saying? Like they cut a hole in it or they did, you know, some type of, what type of, uh, what type of, um, um, Requirements are we putting upon these people who are tearing up our roads for construction or whatever, putting it back like it's supposed to be? Because after a few years, it seems like the roads caving in, the giant holes in those places. And I don't just see it on our roads, what's I see it throughout town, that most of these bad places are a result of somebody else tearing up the road after we finish building it. For utility work or something else that is there something we can do to ensure that they maybe some of they need to put some money in a pot to help us repave it when it's done because it ain't lasting long the way they're doing it. I don't know what they're doing. Getting a bag or something pouring it on it, I, I can't tell you, but I'm just telling you it's not done like it's supposed to be. Well, I can tell you that a lot of times it's a milling process and the mill process where you have to uh, just go down to the ground and, and resurface and then build back up. Um, and then sometimes it's just an overlay. Um, some streets are overlay, some streets are mill. When you have the overlay, you also have to do with crack ceiling. When you crack ceiling, you make sure you get in between um, the places. The problem with the streets are some of the erosions in the cracks have alligator cracking. Some of them are just small crackings and the whole street doesn't need to be uh, resurfaced. And then uh, you have other streets, like on the list, Daughtry Street, that was in a bad situation that need to be milled and, and uh, repaid. So, um, and then you had other streets that has um, roots inside of the, the asphalt. So when you cut and we, we specifically tell them to put back that which was cut. So, I mean, when you're dealing with streets, it's not everything that, everything is not, uh, should I say, just one bad street. 
It could be alligator cracking within that street, but the whole street doesn't need to be touched. Or it could be just, uh, it could be just water damage. It could be uh, erosion on, underneath. It could be uh, sinkhole. It could be various an, amount of things. So as we are studying the streets and as we are doing the streets, um, it's just a matter of you know really surveying and seeing what the what the future is, and we really can't tell you what's really under until they really start paving. I guess my, I'll be back on that question because I don't know if I, I asked the question properly. The, the, the question is, is there a standard in place? Is there some type of inspection done by our people in our town when we have somebody else come in and do some work on our street and tear it up and just repatch it back? Is there work, is there verification oh, yeah. that they oh, yeah. built the foundation back, mm -hmm. not just put tar in the hole because that's only going to last a while, right? Did they really put the foundation, where they dug all the way down past the foundation that was poured for the secure, did they put it back like it's supposed to be, or they just covered up with tar? So Lawrence, I think his question is more specifically related to utility cuts and right. so forth. Um, do we have a process for, whether it's done by our, our town staff or a private plumber or, or contractor or whatever, is, what's, our, what's our process for making sure that those patches are done correctly. Once there is a utility cut, we do uh, reach out to, uh, we have a, a contractor pool paving that we're using right now, and they, they go back and they repair those cuts. Um, a lot of times, if it's public utilities, they cut a line, and uh, they, they will uh, square it out or whatever the situation, put dirt inside of it, and then what happens is pool will come in, they will um, do, the, do the full cuts, and then put the asphalt back. Um, the way it's supposed to be. So sometimes it's, it, it could be um, the way it's packed, you know, that's calling it to sink. Um, it could be the way that, you know, once you, once you pack the surface, it, it could be that play too. It could be some water, it could be more water damage under that that could cause the erosion of the streets as well. Um, usually when they, when they do grade the streets, uh, like on 2nd Street, I was there when they, when they actually graded that street on 2nd Street, went down. So I was there making sure that they did do what they were supposed to do. So it's always someone on site to make sure the streets are, are done properly. Um, if I could add just a little something. Uh, we went through a period where the utility cuts that, that our staff weren't doing, private utility cuts like gas company might do, or, or someone might cut... Um, for a sewer line where they were having individual problems at the residence, um, where they weren't, they were be coming back and filling those in a substandard way. Um, about two years ago, we, we identified that as being a significant problem. And we created a situation where if you're going to cut our street, you have to come and get a permit to do it. Um, so that we're notified. What we were finding was we were getting streets cut and we didn't even know about it. Um, so we now have a permitting process. They have to pay for a permit, have to get it. Um, and then that puts us on notice and puts them on notice that we're going to be checking their work. Um, we also uh, now have to approve that based on that permit. Um, before, that wasn't happening and we had some problems with holding some of these companies accountable because sometimes we didn't know who it was. So I, I'm not sure, Councilman Barber, if you're talking about utility cuts that are older than two years old or, or if they're newer, but if they're older, that, that's probably why. If, if it's been since then, then we need to know which cut that is so that we can go back and, and contact that company to get fixed again. I guess my main question was, was there a process in place? And you're telling me that there is now, at least yes. within the last two years. Prior to that, there really wasn't one, but now there is in the last two years. So that's what, that was my concern, and so that was the question I was looking for. Yeah. Make sure that there was some way we were verifying, because you know, the roads are very expensive for us to maintain. And, and you know, we had a nice road built, and next thing you know, somebody's cut a hole in it. You're like, what in the world? <laughs> and it's a patch. So just want to make sure. Okay, thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Yeah, and before they do get paid, we make sure that we go out inspecting to make sure it's done right. Any other questions, comments on this? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the bid award, uh, Garris Grading and Paving. So I'm, moved, Mayor. A second. We have a motion and a second uh, to approve the bid award to Garris Grading and Pavement. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? 
Thank you. And uh, Lawrence, uh, congratulations, sir. Uh, Lawrence is, uh, our, our, has, has been promoted to public works director to, 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 back, to fill the position that was vacated by uh, Lenny Branch's retirement. So uh, welcome. This is your first official meeting, I guess. All right. So uh, congratulations, sir. Forgive the nerves. Uh, we'll do, I will do better. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I promise the citizens that I will be effective. And uh, I'm always willing to learn. And I'm always willing to be a team player. So I have no doubt. If you have any questions, contact me. And I definitely will try to do as much as I can to help the public. Thank you. Congratulations, sir. Uh, the next item, uh, business item, is business item number four, consideration uh, and request for approval of fiscal year 2020-2021 uh, year-end budget amendments. Uh, Greg or yeah, Mike? Me. That, okay. This is placed here for a placeholder, um, Mr. Mayor. Okay. We, are, we are not prepared tonight to provide this information, okay. uh, being it's June 1st and we still have 29 days left in the fiscal year. Uh, we are asking the council to... Uh, um, table this matter and recess the meeting until uh, June 24th at 7 o'clock when we will reconvene in a conference call to approve, approve these amendments. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Any questions, comments on that? As that goes? Okay. And we'll move on to council members' comments. I know... Um, I was out of town this weekend at a volleyball tournament in uh, Virginia, and uh, I think we had some, some rough weather and a couple of power outages and maybe a, a pole, maybe it was on, on your street, uh, Sonny. I'm not sure if you were without power or not uh, Saturday night, it was, but I know some residences uh, on Woodlawn, at least, and around in that general area, because uh, a pole with a, a corner of Vermont and Woodlawn, right where I used to live, I guess snapped, and uh, but um, I, I did receive some some really good feedback. Just wanted to tell you, Ted, if you will pass it along to your staff that uh, uh, the feedback that I received is that the staff was out there, the crews were out there pretty quickly, um, and they had the pole, a brand new pole, put up that night, and the power back on. I have no idea how long the power was out, but um, it's my understanding that the pole was was set that, that evening and the power restored that evening. And I'm not sure any other areas of town that might have been impacted by that storm, but that's the, on, that's the only one that I'm aware of. So I did want to publicly thank you and your staff. If you, again, if you will pass that along to your staff, um, greatly appreciate it. Oh, that's have, all that I have. Yes, I have sir. a couple yeah. things. Um, I just want to um, state congratulations to our recent graduates, 2021. It was a very hard year all the citizens whether they graduated from high school or college, from maybe kindergarten, going to middle school. I know it's very tough. And the other question I had was the director of the manager, if he could give us an update on our fire chief. Update on the fire chief? Yes, sir. Um, as everyone's aware, our fire chief, John Blanton, um, retired, effective yesterday. Um, so uh, the assistant chief, uh, Jeremy Daughtry, who's sitting in the back, is acting chief at this time. Uh, he will continue in that role until a full-time chief is appointed. Um, we, we are working uh, with uh, Triangle J to get the best list we possibly can to, um, to uh, review applications for the fire chief position. Uh, we do have several applications that have been submitted. Uh, I have uh, answered two different phone calls from, from people, one of them from a Smithfield resident who um, is interested in a position and wanted information in an application, and those were provided. Um, so we're still in the process of taking applications. Um, I don't recall how much time we got left. Tim, do you remember? I believe we're taking applications for at least two to three more weeks. Um, at which time we'll, we'll do our initial review of those applications. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I got a couple, Mr. Mayor. 
I would like Mr. Gary Johnson to stand up for one second, please. Please, Mr. Gary. <laughs> nah, don't be nervous. Because uh, one of the things I can do, um, you know, when I don't agree with something, I'm going to speak it. But when I do agree with something, I'm going to speak it too. And this is going all the way to last year's budget. Um, when we put in for the splash pad, you know, I didn't vote for it. Um, you know, all throughout the budget process, you know, I criticized, I complained, and I complained, and I complained. Uh, actually, last, one day last week, I came by and I had Greg pull up the amount of exactly how much have we spent on this splash, splash pad or whatever. Uh, Mr. Johnson gave me a call Thursday morning asking me to come over to speak um, during the ribbon cutting. I told him, yeah, but I really wasn't going to come. But um, it was about 5.30, I just happened to ride by there, and I saw that thing kicking out plenty of water. And by that time, my, my daughter was riding with my, my parents and stuff, and she texted me, and she was like, Dad, that thing looks fun. And, um, you know, just to hear it, you know, from my own daughter, because we already had our perceptions or whatever. Um, when I saw that, and I knew I was going to go speak, I went home and got me some shorts, and I was ready to get in it too. So I just want to apologize to you, Gary, um, from what I perceive. But um, you know, it's it's still kind of small, but it's, it's workable. The kids are out there having fun, having a great time, and that's that's what it's all about. That's what I like to see. So publicly, I will apologize to you, um, but uh, thank you. Um, I just we talked about the little. Um, niche. Uh, when kids get in the water for a little while, they like to go to the restroom. So we just kind of <laughs> got to work on that. Possibly keep the concession stands, um, concession stand bathrooms open. But um, I'd rather see them running, going across the street than messing up the drains. But um, <laughs> <laughs> definitely like to apologize. I'm here again. Um, and this is going to kind of go into. Um, a little bit what the, uh, the mayor put on his Facebook page the other day when he was talking about the splash pad and he was talking about the dog park. You know, I've met plenty of people who came over to, um, um, to the splash pad the last couple of days uh, just by being around. Some people have been out there and, and it wasn't on, so they didn't think it was on. So I just like, if you go stand by the red thing, it, it's going to get you. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um just the fact that the mayor had on his page, you know, it, it, it's people. I mean, it's been black, white, Hispanic, everybody. And, and you know, that's, that's what makes community right there. Whenever you're having things like a splash pad, like a dog park, and when you got people coming together, you know, that's, that's what makes community. So, um, you know, I, I echo what you said on your Facebook page. And then lastly, this is kind of going to um, go into my last little spill. Um, it was last year. Um, after all the George Floyd, you know, sit, George Floyd situations, all the marches, all the protests and everything, um, Wake County decided they was going to make Juneteenth a, a paid holiday. So I came right in front of our county commissioners the same day that morning. Basically, I said, you know, since we like to be like Wake County, why don't we do it? Uh, Mr. Lee Lamb wrote, wrote a story about it. And people would have probably thought I was the worst person in the world because they felt like I was being divisive by saying that. And that, that out of all the stuff that is kind of, you know, spoken about me, saying I'm a divisive person, that, that was the wrong thing to say because you probably don't know me if you're going to say that. This year, we do have a Juneteenth um, day, um, June 19th out of Smith Collins Park, and I invite everybody, please come out there. Please come out there and learn, you know? And for a black person, you know, that, that's, that's our 4th of July, really. That's our Independence Day. Because in 1776, you know, we were still enslaved. So a lot of people don't know that. So Juneteenth, our program that we have out there, which the council uh, approved last month, Please come out there and learn. It's inclusive. We want everybody to be out there to learn. I mean, meet some people, network. So just hearing, you know, how divisive I am, I just knew we had to do something. 
So um, it, it's gonna be a full day of free food. Um, we have stuff for the kids, you know, stuff for the grown ups, and you know, um, hopefully, you know, um, I'll get back before the council. And I kind of want to make this an annual thing so people can learn. And sometimes you just need to learn about what these some of these things mean before you start saying, you know, um, somebody's divisive or whatever. Because if anybody that knows me, that'd be the last thing I am is is divisive. You know, if I have to call you out, I'm gonna call you out, but it's not being divisive. So that's all I have to say. But please come out that day from 12 to 8. Uh, we're going to have a parade. Uh, we're going to march down from um, the Johnson Central Alumni Center, Coach Regional Ennis Pavilion, down to the Innovation Academy. If you want to come march and walk with us, please do so. Uh, we're going to line up at 10 o'clock. That's going to start at 1030. It's probably not even a half a mile. So um, I encourage everybody, I want everybody to come out and um, let's have this a full day of community also. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Councilman Lee. What time did you say that was starting again? The parade is 10.30, the event is at 12. Okay. Yeah, and if you haven't seen the new um, splash pad, the, the EBNS um, splash pad, I encourage you uh, to go by and, and take a look at it. Um, and I certainly hope that in you know, a, a few years we're up here looking to expand that that park, right? But um, it was a, a great kickoff, and I'm sure it's going to be it's going to be used quite a bit. The, the day that it opened, there were lots of kids out there, and, and Councilman Lee got uh, soaked by all the kids, um, um, and they just they just had they had a ball. So uh, I encourage any citizen that uh, um, hasn't been by there to, to go by and take your kids or take your you know your friends or go yourself. Um, you're probably going to see me out there too, Councilman Lee, at some point. Um, but uh, your grandkids or whatever, it it, it really is. A, it's, a, it's a cool, it's a cool addition to our park system. So, so thank you. Um, anyone else? Councilman I have Barber? a couple. Uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, uh, Councilman Lee, I've always admired your uh, um, your commitment to your district. I don't know of anybody who works harder for his district than you do. And uh, when I took my position with District 4, one of my objectives was to, to be as strong an advocate for my district as you are for your district. And uh, having said that, I got a couple of things. Oh, yeah, that'll get there in a minute. Uh, Three minutes. Uh, first of all, let me just say that uh, so. we are in, yeah, just to I'll give you an update. I thought we were going to get out by now. Uh, uh, just to give you an update, uh, we do, we are working diligently on the uh, Drone Park and Gertrude Johnson Park. Uh, we uh, we just got the approval uh, with some funds from the uh, Visitor Bureau. They gave us some funds to help finish the fence for Gertrude Johnson Park. So now the Park and Recreation Department can control access to the park, which is something you can do with just an empty field with neighbor's fence around it, really. And so uh, it's starting to look more like a real park that we can use. We appreciate that, appreciate the commitment. Um, so we're hopefully we'll have this completed in the next couple of months. That's our target. We've done a lot of work. Brian's done a lot of work. Well, the airport you people, because you got to get approvals for make sure you can fly drones. Yeah. They can just That's take off and fly drones, believe it or not. So uh, we, we appreciate that. And, and uh, the interest is that we can not only do it for the town, but we actually have, I've already got a, uh, a company that does uh, drone fly-ins around the state, has already said once we get ours completed, they'll be glad to put them on, put us on their schedule annually to have a fly-in. So we're excited about the opportunity for Smithfield to shine in that area. Another thing I wanted to mention was I am a part of the Pedestrian Plan Steering Committee. And what I found was that uh, when they're reviewing the current pedestrian infrastructure, there was a glaring issue to me. The issue is that West Smithville continues to be isolated from access to the rest of the town unless you're driving a car. There is no way to get to the aquatic center. There is no way to get to the library or get to anywhere downtown. There, you can't even, but truth is, you can't even get to McDonald's in West Smithville. There is no pedestrian ability for anything. You've got to have an adult take you somewhere to get anywhere. And as you know, we have no facilities in West Smithfield whatsoever, zero. So uh, that, that kind of, uh, that, that says it's a glaring thing as we develop this pedestrian plan for the future, 
we have to find a way to connect all of our children to access our facilities, wherever they might be. Yeah, we're only a mile and a half from the aquatic center. You can't get there from there. I mean, you can't. I don't walk across that dangerous bridge to get there. So they would have to go walk through town. Oh, you can't walk through town because there's no sidewalks to get from, from, get from a McDonald's to town. There's just not a way. So uh, it's it really dangerous. So um, one of the things that we, we need, we, we as a town need to find a way and invest in a way for all of our citizens and to reconnect, or to not re to connect, to connect first time ever. A, over a third of our population in West Smithfield and our children in West Smithfield to the great things that we offer in the town of Smithfield. Great things we offer in the town of Smithfield, but they can't get here. So uh, I would ask that something you'll see me continue to harp on as we go forward. I appreciate being voluntold to be on that committee. As soon as I heard they were talking about sidewalks, I said, I'm involved in that because we need something to down there. And it does cost money. We are looking at doing some studies to make sure no study is not a popular thing. But we don't know what the cost is to build certain things. And so we have to do some studies. So anyway, I appreciate the uh, opportunity of serving my community and uh, we are continue to have a more diverse population in West Smithfield. Very diverse population in West Smithfield. I just met my new neighbors two houses down and over for me. The gentleman's name is AJ. His wife's name is Carol. And their daughter's name is Kendra. And uh, he is from Chicago. And uh, it's a, you know, it was interesting having our conversation. So we're moving people in from different places. And they were excited about the possibility of getting a job closer by instead of where I live. So... Uh, uh, so, but anyway, I appreciate the opportunities. I appreciate the opportunity to be part of my community and to help support my community. And these gentlemen here have helped us very much. I mean, we're making progress, as you see. It's just a slow progress. It takes time. But thank y'all for being a part of it and for listening to me. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Tom, I'll turn it over to the manager for your report, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Gotten great big letters here to talk about the splash pad, but I guess that's already been done. So I'll pass on that. Uh, but it is open, so please do go use it. Uh, Equity Drive, uh, the paving is done on Equity Drive. I've talked to several of the business owners over there or managers, uh, very happy with the product they have over there. Uh, we still have some minor things, some little curbing repairs, some sidewalk repairs that are being completed, as well as we have a, a stop sign yet to put back up. So there's a few little things that are still being done, but for the most part, that project is, is going to be in the books here real quick. Um, uh, our water plant is back up and fully operational. We do have one of the raw pumps that's been repaired and is, and is operating as expected. The second pump um, is still being repaired, but we anticipate it will be uh, up next week um, and then we'll be fully operational again we, without the bypass pumps. We have one bypass pump still in place, um, so we are fully operational, providing all the water that we could possibly provide uh, with the equipment that we have. So I will say that... Um, Smithfield itself, our, our city limit customers were never in any jeopardy of not having water. Uh, I know there was a lot of discussion going around with, and it was confusing because the county was having trouble at the same time we were having trouble, but we were not having trouble providing water to our customers. Um, only our bulk customer, which is the county, um, for one or two days we had to cut their, their water back a little bit. Um, so. We were operational, we remain so. Um, that's all I have, Mr. Thank you, sir. There's not anything else. Uh, um, I will entertain a motion to recess the meeting until June the 24th at 7 p.m. for a video conference call. I make a motion we recess until June the 24th for a conference call. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Councilman Scott seconded. Very good. Uh, um,
Thank you. Talk to me about the areas.